Spain. The Spanish coast is the perfect place for a holiday. But increasingly, the British don't seem to want to leave. With sun, sand and sea, what could be nicer? There's a lot of very lonely people out here, I think. Physically attacked by the, the developer at his own home. It's disgusting and it didn't ought to happen, but it does still happen out here. Yeah, we didn't even think to ask. <laughs> Is it okay? Hello darling. Okay. Yeah, I just about kept up with him. Good. <laughs> David and Maureen own Fairways, one of the most successful restaurants in Torre Vieja. They've made their Spanish dream come true. They own property not only in Spain, but in South Africa too. But it hasn't always been easy for this pair of ex-hairdressers. Yeah, it was Charlie Watts' barber about 30 yeah. years ago. The drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a local boy from Wembley. We both worked in hairdressers we both in hairdressers. Wembley. I turned the telly on one lunchtime and I saw BCCI Bank is in major problems and they've closed and my God, here we are, we've got no money and... I think I'd, I'd gone out to get my hair cut. Yeah. When I come home, I had my hair cut and I was skint. Skint they may have been, but luckily they've been unable to sell their Spanish holiday home. So they moved here and let the property work for them. And that coming year, we had quite a good year with rents with golfers yeah. coming in. So we knew we had a bit of income for six or nine months. Yeah, that, but when we so we rented the, a small bungalow. A small and then when flat. we bought the, the restaurant, we, we had to We had to sell the house. Yeah. So yeah. we thought, well, maybe we could sleep. There was a couch up here. Maybe we could just sleep It was in the middle of here. July. You couldn't find anywhere to rent. Nowhere at all. And then a customer came in and told us about this house that we bought and said, I'm selling a house that's got a pool. I'm going, oh, dang, fancy owning a place with a pool. He went, oh, we've only been in business two years, it's early days, you know, don't run before you can walk. The voice of reason. Yeah, it didn't get anywhere. Three bedrooms, well, three bedrooms, a jacuzzi room. Right. A little gymnasium. Gymnasium. Yeah, really nice, aren't they? Four bathrooms. Um, two of us, sorry. Cleanest people in two of the ever. So... I, I said, well, just let's have another look at it. Let's just try and get, see if we could get a mortgage. And we got a mortgage with no problem, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. With all our books from the restaurant. Yeah. The bank, and we bank we've never been in before, never banked for them. And we've extended it, and extended it, and that's it now. Just quietly go about his business. He's contributed uh, with a bat for England. For David and Maureen, the hard part's over. But are David and Maureen normal? <laughs> I run a restaurant here and I, I would say that less than 5% of my clientele is Spanish. I've got to say this part of Spain at the moment is more like England than it is Spanish. My name's Steve Boosie. I'm the owner of a restaurant here in Playa Flamenca called Motowns. I've been in Spain now for just over five years. We bought the property I think in 1996, moved in one year later and when we got to Spain the house wasn't ready as is pretty much the norm out here. But in all fairness to my particular builders, they had moved us in within two days of being here. Although the house was finished, typically in Spain, the roads weren't, the swimming pool wasn't. We only had about two neighbours. There was quite a lot of burglaries in the area because there was quite a lot of builders on the site. There was no street lights, no, no water, no very short electric. We spent the year of the electric cutting out every single night every day. It got to the stage at one Christmas when the fuse box actually blew up because more people come out to their houses and everyone was using it to cook Christmas dinners. The fuse board caught on fire. Unfortunately my father-in-law also moved out with us at the same time in the house next door. Um, lost his call and went to have a, 
an argument with the builder to try and get us back on the supply so that we could all eat our Christmas dinner, but was um, physically attacked by the, the developer at his own home, which I blame my father-in-law for, for going to his own home anyway on Christmas Day. It took us nearly a year for other people to move into the urbanisation and the roads to go in and the swimming pool to be built. And in all fairness, when it was finished, it was a very nice complex, but it was a traumatic time. The majority of people that come to Spain at the moment are coming on so-called inspection trips. And they come out and they're sold the whole idea of Spain on a four-day trip. And they're shown properties and they're led to believe that they can buy properties at a certain price which unfortunately is never the true price when they get here. If you were going to spend £100,000 in England on anything, you would actually take a little while to do it. You wouldn't do it in three days. But they just kind of get on this holiday thing and they come out here and they spend maybe £100,000, £200,000 on a house which they decide in, in three days. And, and this is a major investment for most people. Hello, my name is Patricia Muirhead. I am a personal property consultant. I would advise someone to come out September, October, or maybe at the, in springtime. Maybe rent somewhere, it's not difficult. And have a look at the different areas. And I think if you're out here for two or three months, you'd probably pick up some idea about where you wanted to be. I've known many people come here, get off the plane and load their luggage, they decide to go down to the supermarket or have a walk down to the beach to come back and everything that they've just unloaded into the house is gone. Spain is exactly the same as anywhere else in the world. Do not carry large amounts of money with you in Spain. There are banks here, you use bank cards, get your money on a daily basis from the holes in the walls or whatever. You don't leave windows open all night because it's hot. You use alarms when when you go out of the house, you know, your eye open for people that are acting strangely around the area. Spanish law says you can be uh, delayed three months without any problem for the builder. Also my experience says that if it's another three months or up to another six months, you still might not get any comeback. Don't be, don't be scared of buying out here, but you do just have to be very careful about who you buy with. You just have to be sensible that you're not being pushed into something. Try and, and talk to people who live here as well, and you would not be making a mistake then. Well, you would be less likely to make a mistake than you would be, because we all make mistakes at times, you know, and it happens. It does indeed happen, mostly to Glenda, Della and Craig. You're in Spain, nobody wants to help. You might as well be in Africa. What do you think of uh, your experience of Spain so far? Shite. <laughs> And my biggest ever bugbear. I hate them with a passion. What Anything else cooking wise, I don't mind doing. I just don't like eggs. I just don't like cooking eggs. I just hate cooking eggs. Craig and Della were bored with Britain, so they swapped a humdrum life in Blackpool for one in Torre Vieja. Della, Craig, and I had all been discussing running a business or starting our own business in England. But when my other daughter said that she was coming out to Spain to live, well, we just put our heads together and said, well, if we're going to run a business, why don't we do it in Spain? And six weeks later, here we are. Was that not a bit impulsive? Yes. <laughs> a little bit. Della's mum, Glenda, came over here for like a five, six day scouting mission to have a look around to see what sort of bars were, how much it was going to cost us to live over here, stuff like that. When I, when I came over for the six days in February, I'd already looked on the internet for various businesses and place to live, etc. Um, I had a couple of phone numbers given to me. Um, phoned one particular person who then put me on to another person who in turn showed me this place. And they said that they'd been interest in it you know. so if we wanted it we needed to get a move on which in hindsight was probably a bit of salesmanship but there you go <laughs> so in the mad slightly impulsive manner that we have we decided to stick a deposit down and um, and have it 
without even seeing it. Do you want this lifted up? We opened for for six days. Then we had major drainage problems. Um, the place was flooding, the water was all coming up through the toilets and out into the bar restaurant. Mess. Um, so we had to close for nearly, nearly a month. It's basically, it's not solar waste, it's, um, it's kitchen waste. So it's basically our, our toilets are underneath the kitchen. Yeah. So, but it's not their fault at the end of the day, there's a blockage in a line now, but all the pipes ain't fitting properly. So when the water's going down, it's just finding a way back and it's coming up here. Uh, that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, well, first of all, I had to send the equivalent of €2,500 from England to hold the place. Then, when we came over, I had to put another two months' rent up front, which was another €5,000. But then there was also the cost of what they classed as goodwill, fixtures and fittings, 15,000 euros. So all in all I paid over 22,500 euros. In the contract it stated that I'd paid three months, which was 7,500. There was no mention of 15,000. Um, so you didn't get a receipt for that? Didn't get a receipt, didn't even think to ask. <laughs> the fridge. The fridge. Our oh, wondrous fridge that we have. Where have mushrooms I've lost my mushrooms. Apparently, although we've signed an inventory for it, does not belong to the business. Yeah. Um, the people that own the fridge, i.e. a stray dam, want it back. When, uh, when all the trouble started and we were trying to contact the owners, um, because the owners were, I don't know, they, they're Russian, but they, 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 they live in Russia or Japan or somewhere, I'm not quite sure. Um, we were trying to get hold of them, we couldn't get hold of them. This address that they'd given us was, um, <laughs> what word, um, can't think, incomplete. I mean, if this goes, this kitchen is yours. It's as simple as that. The word surface is attached to it. It's all one big unit. If that goes, then there's nothing else to space. I mean, it's my only work service that I have in the building. For me to replace this, not there. So without this, this kitchen closed. It is as simple as that. It doesn't get any simpler than that, as you tell us with. In desperation, we sought legal advice. And when I explained the situation to the lawyer, he said, you know, did you get receipts for all this? No. And he looked at me as if I was stupid, which of course I was. What I have to do, and this is where you feel the heat that I go through. It's closed. It's done. The door. The door. Why, why, why are you shutting the door? Because, right. as you can see, my gas blows out, but I don't. And you can't come through without the gas. If it weren't for the British people moving out here, I mean, Spain and places like this wouldn't be as developed as they are. Yeah. Because people wouldn't. They wouldn't need the houses, they wouldn't need the businesses, you know what I mean? I mean, In all Britain. Spain is still known as a third world country now, isn't it? Yeah. The food quality we get, we get from a firm called Euro Foods, which um, supply British products. Right. So we get British sausage, Danish bacon, British hash browns, yada yada yada, beans are from Britain. At least over here, when you wake up in the morning, you look out, you see blue skies, white buildings, palm trees. A bit of sun, a bit of sun. Did you burn yourself in a um, Yeah, just a little bit. I thought it might add to the drama. <laughs> it was obviously wrong. It was just adding to my pain. <laughs> it is, I mean, it is. It's a life a lot of people want to lead, but never, never have the actual conviction or the courage to actually do it. They all want it. They all envy when you tell them that you're doing it, and they say, oh, I wish I could do that. But they don't. Oh, what it is? Yeah. Why is it always my pain and my suffering, though? No bugger else. Welcome to the Villa de Rado, eh? And Anne said to the guy, where's the gate to the swimming pool? And he said, gate to the swimming pool? She said, we paid extra to have a gate put in. He says, what swimming pool?